grace and peace welcome to spreading truth ministry.com on youtube welcome and thank you so much for tuning in it is a review of creatures of la i believe this is episode six um if i am correct if not then i'll definitely indicate the proper episode that i am reviewing um it was it wasn't a lot that was discussed it was maybe two themes and it was kind of extended throughout the whole episode um the first theme was um regarding pastor jay getting a tattoo and so the whole episode was was kind of evolved around that um and in, in involving pastor cheney his wife um lady jay and um i believe it was bishop noel jones friend i believe she was also in the conversation at one point i think they had met um for lunch or something or dinner or whatever and it came up in the discussion i think it was lunch they were talking about it and, and kind of getting people's perspectives on what they felt about tattooing. Um, and the second theme, it was about Bishop Gibson wanting to be on um, their the Church of God in Crisis board of electoral board or something, or I, I think it's a official board or like an apostle board or something like that. But it's a governing board, and I guess he was um, seeking um, a position there. Um, in the organization that I currently belong to, we have an board and apostle of 12 bishops. And so it's, I believe it's something similar to that where they govern the body. We have churches throughout the, you know, throughout America, um, Africa, uh, Australia, um, Jamaica, you know, so yeah. So I'm assuming they have churches just like we do everywhere. Um, if, if not more, because it's probably a larger organization that, than we are. And so I guess it's their job to govern the churches and to settle matters and to um, establish churches and just deal with administrative, spiritual, whatever, involving the churches. And so he's very interested in being a part of that. Um, and so it's, it's the whole process of him. I guess he had to preach at their convocation, I'm thinking. Um, and, you know, he didn't know exactly how to approach because I guess some of the men that are on the border kind of sitting there. I don't know if he's on like a watch. Um, I know some organizations have like a watch where they take their time and they watch the people that are being considered for positions. And so um, and I think he has a reputation for being a little bit extravagant. Um, I think he has a reputation, as he referred to it, as being a bishop with swag. And so I think that within itself, especially within a conservative uh, community of bishops, um, may be a problem for them because they may think that he may um, just be a little bit too, I don't know, too contemporary, too, you know, too much for them. Um, you know, in terms of theological interpretations, just a lot of things. Um, and so that, that's pretty much what, what the two themes were, just his issue with them, um, you know, pinning him or, or, you know, labeling him or be a certain per kind of way um, and him wanting to be in a certain position but not necessarily being accepted by his peers and the issue with the tattooing. So I do apologize. Um, for the review coming so late because my computer has been down i had a, a really bad virus on it for some time now and i've just kind of been working with it and it would come in and out and come and go it would freeze my computer and that type of thing and so i decided to reset it back to the factory um level and i did that and it seems like the virus is still there it's not gone away so if you have any <laughs> any tips please let me know what to do it's the one with the white screen it comes in and out and so um, I'm having to use um, whatever I can, but um, it's limited. You know what I mean? So I, I couldn't do the review because of that. I tried, like I said, and, and resetting it back to the factory level, that took some time because I had to take off all my files and everything like that. So I do apologize um, and put it on an external hard drive and everything. So I do apologize for the late review. So that's pretty much the gist of that particular episode. Um, I'm going to express my concerns on this video because it's relatively short. I did not give you a blow by blow this time because this is really more or less a review than a recap for real. Um, because like I said, it was only like two themes running through it. Um, you know, I think it was the only part of the whole tattoo thing. I think, um, Pastor Cheney's wife, um, had a Maisha, Lady Maisha had an issue with the tats. I think everyone else was cool with it. <laughs> um, 
I think Bishop Gibson said that, you know, he's weak when it comes to that type of thing, that kind of pain thing or having to cut himself or, you know, things like that. And he really has an issue with needles or something like that. He said, other than that, he didn't see a problem with it. Um, I think even Bishop Cheney mentioned a scripture um, in Revelation regarding um, something on Jesus's thigh. And he claimed that that was a tattoo or something like that. Um, to justify it and I guess he he was basically saying that him and his wife they're going to have to agree to disagree and so and he also made a joke about him getting one or whatever I don't know if it was joking he was sincere but he talked about maybe perhaps getting one himself so you know that was pretty much the gist with that um, in regards my concerns in regards to tattooing um, I've had conversations on my YouTube about it before not a lot but I think I talked about it when I reviewed um, the first ladies when i reviewed their first ladies i believe one of the ladies got a tattoo in one of the episodes and i think we um talked about tattoos now i will make this disclaimer um there was someone that email i think they gmailed me hello i don't know if you were viewing the um the video now um but someone that, that said that they're a member of uh bishop i'm sorry pastor jay's church and I just want to give that person a shout out. Hello, I forgot your, your username, but I just want to give you a shout out and thank you so much for your kind words um, emailing me. I, I, I love the fact that, you know, there are people from their congregations watching the show. Um, it kind of will give them a certain level of perspective that maybe they didn't have prior to. Um, but this channel is about spreading the truth um, and the truth the truth is the word of God and that's what this particular channel stands on so um, whenever I review things which I don't review many shows I really don't I really just try to deal with those that pertain to the body of Christ I really do if you can just look to my channel you don't see very much reviews on there I think my first video review was the um, about the first ladies and then I think I was asked whether I was gonna do this or not and I looked at the trailer and I said you know what I think I'm gonna do it so I don't do very many reviews so when I do a review I like to do a review um, that's coming from a biblical perspective okay so I'm not the kind of person if you were to watch my reviews not I'm just not trying to find stuff to um, tear down the preachers that's that's not what this particular channel is about um, I don't think that's my role um, it's my role to point out what's right or what's wrong based on the scriptures though now that is my role as a preacher um, the Bible says that we are to cry aloud and spare not. It says that in Isaiah 58. So um, we have to tell the truth, um, but we have to do it in love. And so I try to um, be as, you know, trying to cover both ends of the spectrum, pointing out the spectrum being the positives as well as the negatives. And so, and trying to keep it a balance. And that's, that's definitely something that I kind of, you know, aspire to the whole process through this, up until this point in time and I'm going to do that today just like I just told you kind of what happened and now I'm going to give you my assessment now I'm going to give you my perspective based on what I understand the scriptures to mean it doesn't mean that I don't like them as people it doesn't because I don't agree with them it doesn't mean that they're bad people because I don't agree with them I believe that they're doing what they think are, is right but just because we do things that we think are right doesn't mean that we're doing the right things or that we're pleasing God. You know what I mean? And that's, that includes me. It does, you know, that's all of us. And so in regards to tattooing, based on the scriptures, when I read them, um, the interpretation is clear. But I do realize that it is God that gives the understanding. And I can understand people can take it different ways. I do understand that and I believe that with some of the pastors I think they got maybe a different interpretation when they read the scriptures. So let's go over some of those scriptures and then you decide what you want to believe and since I am a history major I like to look into history. I think it's important to get a, histor uh, a historical perspective on things. I think it's important because it the history does confirm a lot of script scriptures. Um, it really does, um, you know, as well as science. And I think people try to say science is kind of anti-God, but it really isn't. Science, a lot of science, it proves that God's, God exists, as well as the historical facts. They prove a lot of, they give credence to a lot of the scriptures, believe it or not. 
um, a lot of archaeology and things of that nature really proved a lot of scripture references, a lot of especially historical aspects when it comes to the Egyptians and when it comes to the Roman Empire and different things that since we've outlived those generations of people, we have to look to now the, their artifacts and with the things that they left behind in order to really decipher what their culture was all about and how they lived and governed themselves. And so a lot of our today, a lot of today's society adapted a, a lot of what the Egyptians did and as well as the Romans, Roman Empire and what they did. A lot, even our current day, has incorporated their way of life. And so I would suggest um, before you make a decision, yay or nay, against it, let's say you do have a tattoo, but you never thought about whether it was right or wrong and you're a believer or you're a non-believer and, and you're just coming you know, into this discussion, like, well, well, what's the problem with it? The first thing that I would suggest anybody to do is to just do a little bit of research. Just Google you know, the origin, what is the origin of, of tattooing um, and that type of thing. Google it and then any encyclopedia um, would, would provide you with any information in regards to the background of, of tattooing. And so when I Google it, um, the site that that stood out for me was the Smithsonian website. They had um, did some research on tattooing based on what they found, which was you know because they have a lot of historical artifacts. They have mummies. Um, they have um, you know figurines and that type of thing, body parts and stuff that they've digged um, up uh, in their excavating, um, when they excavated different areas or whatever they call it, where the paleontologists went in and they did their digs. These are some of the things that they discover. And from there, they got some information about, um, how the people lived during that time and, you know, what were the, some of their practices and et cetera. And so when I went to that website, which was again, www.smithsonianmag.com, and it was under history and archeology, span backward slash tattoo. And so historically, there is evidence of tattooing. You know, that's nothing new, right? The Bible says there's nothing new in the sun. So yes, historically speaking, groups of people have done or they practice the art of tattooing. Um, within the Smithsonian, um, they found a mummy that dated around about a little over 5,000 years old, the mummy was. They found it near Italy and Australia. And um, the border of Italy and Australia is where they found it. And this was in 1991. And, but the prior to that discovery in 1991, they actually found their first um, a, a mummy that was dated year like 2000 BC. Um, and with there, they found, you know, the tats on the mummy and they also found figurines with the tats, like I forestated, um, with body tattoos as well as limbs, like different, just hands and that type of thing with, with, with tattoos on them. Um, and again, dating back from like 4,000 to 3,500 BC. Okay. Most of the mummies that they found, um, the parts that they found were female were female. Um, which I thought was interesting. And also, um, what I, another thing that was interesting that the markings were very similar. The markings were very similar that they had found. And they said that the markings were around the thigh area and the markings were around the breast area. But they were very similar. And they also said that based on the information that they gathered from their writings and from the artifacts and from the actual tattoos themselves, they believe that the tattoo served as a protection, um, some type of uh, sign or um, charm or spell that they put on the women to protect their wombs. So while they're carrying their babies, that they can carry them to full term, um, which would be more or less a superstitious type thing, um, an omen type thing. So this is what they did. So. It was the exact same tattoo. So the tattoos were all similar. All the, of the people that they found, which were mostly women, they had the tattoos were around the thigh area, around the breast area, and they were the exact similar prints. All right. And that's what they believed that they were served for because they really didn't see what would be the purpose of all the women having the tattoo on the thigh or the breast area, the very same tattoos. 
from different people from different places that they found the mummies, which I found to be very interesting. Um, later down in the comments, it talked about um, during the Roman Empire. They said, of course, obviously throughout the ages, you know, the practice continued. And they said that the practice is also adopted by the Roman soldiers. So this is now uh, an account of males getting the tattoo. Um, and it said it spread it throughout the Roman Empire. So it became very popular even in the Roman Empire. Okay. And they said this happened until the emergence of Christianity. Okay. And this is what I found to be very interesting. When the Emperor Constantine accepted Christianity, they banned tattoos because they believed, and this was in the writings from, from you know, the historical writings from the research that they believe that the Christians felt that this disfigured God's image. Like we are made in the image of God, according to the scriptures. And they believe that we are not to disfigure God's image. Okay. This is what was said. And this was um, dated from three, uh, 306 to 373 AD. So during the time of Constantine's reign, um, this, the practice was banned. And it was partly because, partly due to him accepting Christianity and because of what they believe the Bible said. And again, this was, this predates the New Testament. The only writings they had during that time was the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament, but the old writings, the scroll, okay, is what they had during that time. And this was written, this was um, the research that was done in, in, um, at the Smithsonian in 2007. That's the reference for that particular writing. So read more, do more research on that. I found that to be pretty interesting um, how the Christians, even during the, what, 306 AD, they banned the practice of tattooing. Hmm. And that's relatively close to when Christ was around. So not, well, I'm sorry, I take that back. <laughs> that was after Christ, my bag. But that was closer to the early church. That's closest to the early church. So. I thought that was good. And so as I began to kind of just read, you know, go through some things and some scriptures and I discovered a few scriptures um, that I felt was interesting. First would be Romans. Um, um, first would be Romans 12 and 1, which says that I beseech you, I'm sorry, 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, um, by the mercies of God, that you present your body, the living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I thought that was interesting that we are not to conform to this world. We're not to conform to the world's practices. And that we are to present our bodies holy and acceptable to God. And that is our reasonable service. That's the first scripture that came to mind. Um, the other scripture that came to mind is 1 Corinthians, the 6th chap chapter, verses um, 19 through 20. It says, What know ye not that the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, those that have the Spirit of God? Um, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which ye have. Um, of God and ye are not your own okay it says that you're not your own but you're brought with the price therefore glorify God in your body in your spirit which are God's okay so those that have God's spirit you you're no longer your own your body now belongs to God and so I found it to be interesting because somebody made a statement that you know it's her body she can do whatever she wants to do with it well if your body belongs to God, then no, you can't do what you want to do with your body. You have to glorify God with your body. And you may say, well, you know, if somebody's getting a tattoo and, you know, it has God's name on it or it has a symbol that may, um, you know, glorify Christianity or something like that, which some of those most of those symbols do not glorify Christianity if you really do the research. But um, you know, those, those symbols that associate with Christianity, what's wrong with that? You may think, right? Okay. Then I would strongly suggest that you read Leviticus, the 19th chapter, verse 28. Okay. To answer that question, 
that particular scripture says that ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead nor print any markings upon you I am the Lord so and and is a conjunction so that's a continuation of the thought so you should not cut yourselves um, cut your flesh for the dead um, nor print any markings upon you I'm the Lord so he's giving his people the children of Israel instructions and we that are saved are now grafted in we're now Abraham's seed and so we are also the children of Israel spiritually speaking so we are not this is a law by the way um, Leviticus is one of the, the five books of the law so it is a law and this is what God is is telling his people not to do um, he also said his word that we're not to learn the ways of the heathen um, it, basically based on the information I provided through the ar the archaeological research it is a pra practice that is considered pagan um, because just like I also also um, told you regarding um, Emperor Constantine and how when he after he accepted Christianity because of the teachings of those Christians during that time which was based upon the written law which we now just read in Leviticus the 19 it prohibits the cutting of the flesh it prohibits marking of the flesh so this is what they had so that's why Constantine decided to ban um, tattooing or marking of the flesh okay so that's what I would tell that person I would give them that scripture and I would tell them that's what it says and it's entirely up to the person another scripture that is saying the same thing would be Leviticus the 21st chapter verse 5 and it talks about the priest um, it's speaking to the priest in regards to the dead is saying cutting their flesh referencing the dead and that's in verse um, 5 the latter part of verse 5 similar to uh, what Leviticus the 19th has said 21 follows the same thought process but it's referring to the priest so the first one in 19 is referring to the people um, verse um, chapter 21 is referring to the priest and so the pastors ministers are the modern day priests um, they are the ones that minister the word of God to the people to feed the people and they're the ones that receive the offering so they are the modern day we consider the modern day priests. so the modern day priests are not to conduct such practices as well I know that Bishop Jay that's I'm sorry Pastor Jay that's what he loves to do that's what he he enjoys doing but I think he needs to go over those scriptures and read them again and pray for a level of understanding because um, you can't I mean it says thou shall not um, print mark cut so it's pretty clear in my opinion but again I do understand that it's God that gives the understanding and unless you sat under that teaching you know what I mean so unless you sat under that um, and somebody actually taught you that you know or again you don't necessarily have to sit on sit under that teaching you can read the word of God and God can give you understanding so like for me there were some things that did nobody teach me it was through the Spirit of God that taught me certain things and it wasn't a person saying hey no don't do this that you know it was the Spirit of God and it was through the Word of God as I read that the Spirit gave me understanding so um, again I'm not saying that they're not saved I'm not saying that they're not gonna go to heaven what I'm saying is that that practice is not for the people of God and if we find ourselves guilty of such practices we do have forgiveness of sin thank God um, we can repent we can denounce it and we can stop you know and we can teach other people to do the same to not do it um, it is not for the people of God um, I know what society is teaching. I know, um, you know, what's popular, you know, for us, even though the Bible said it's nothing new in the sun. Um, but just like I showed you in this, you know, briefly in regards to history, um, you know, there are certain practices that there's nothing new. I mean, this stuff goes back to Egypt and it probably goes farther back than Egypt. Um, that these practices were done but you have to understand that they had a very polytheistic society they served more than one God but when that people to serve Yahweh uh, when people serve God God of heaven and earth 
the creator God, he gave his people instructions on how they ought to conduct themselves. And when he gave them instructions, he often said, not like the heathens, don't do as the heathens. They practice this. They worship the dead. They do this. They practice witchcraft. They practice necromancing. They practice this. Don't offer your children to idols. Don't um, do um, child sacrifice. Don't do this and that. He said it clearly in his word because other people were doing it. So just because other people are doing it doesn't make it right. And so, and God oftentimes, oftentimes brought to the people's attention that there are some things that are going on in the land. But I, when you go there, I don't want you to adapt to their customs because they're not of me. They're heathenistic. They're paganistic. They're unto their gods. So we have to be careful what we adapt as believers. Um, the Bible tells us that we are to be peculiar, that we're to be different, um, you know, and that's that's what we should be. We should be different. We should not look like everyone else. Can you be forgiven of getting tattoos? Absolutely. Can God use you? Absolutely. Can you get into heaven with a tattoo? Absolutely. Um, there's no anything on record that indicates that you can't um, if you repent and if you turn and if you denounce it. And that's what you, that's what's going to have to happen. Um, my prayers are for them that they would receive understanding. That's my prayers. But that's based upon what I've read from the scriptures and what I've gotten from just history. Um, and you can do the same. Same scriptures. You can go over and read it. Same research. You can go and read it and you can come to your own conclusions. And so that's the conclusion that I came up with. So doesn't mean that your your pastor is a bad person per se. It's just that God is the one that gives the understanding. And maybe that's just something that he just can't quite see. Um, you know, there's some things that, that maybe I don't see. You know, um, does that mean that I'm a bad person? No, that means that if it's for me to see or if it's against God, I believe that he's going to give me the understanding. And guess what? I'm receptive. I'm like, if it's against you, no matter what it is, I don't care how much I enjoy it. Um, I'm going to stop if it's against God because that's how much I love him. So, you know, that's my prayer for those pastors and preachers and that that they would get to the point in their walk that regardless of what God says, that they're willing to forsake all to follow him. And that's how every believer should be. And the same thing with with Bishop Gibson. I think he made a statement about, um, you know, Jay-Z and Kanye having ministries. And I would have to differ. They may have a ministry, but it's not of righteousness. They may have a ministry, but it's not holy. It's not of God. That I will say. And he made they may he made that statement when he was in a barbershop talking to those men about them passing judgment upon him being a gun carrying person and this and that. I don't think there's any harm in somebody carrying the guns. Now I'm definitely um, pro <laughs> pro gun carrier because I think that we, you know what, let's just be truthful. We're going to probably end up having to learn how to kill our own food anyway after a while because this food is poison. I'm just saying. Um, we are in the latter days. We're in the last days. And eventually, in order to buy or sell, you're going to need that mark. And that mark is the mark that you don't want. And that's the mark of the beast. So it's just interesting how the trend of marking is becoming more and more popular because I do feel like the mark of the beast, the whole marking concept, the whole tattooing, they're going to use that to seg that way, segue that in into, oh, it's harmless. Just get this little mark, you know, tattoo and it's okay. And I think that's how they're going to convince the people to get these marks, um, which is the mark of the beast, which is, is, is something that they don't want. Because if you get the mark of the beast, you're not going to be able to enter in. And that's the truth. You, if you have the mark, you're going to be cursed. So, you know, my thing is be anti-mark. <laughs> because if you're not and if you get tricked into or deceived into getting that mark of the beast then you know there's just there will be no repentance for that at that point and it's so sad but that's true and just read revelations about the mark of the beast because that's a real that's a real concept i think people say oh you know it's not mm, well i believe the scriptures and i believe it is real so again this is a bible teaching and believing channel <laughs> so if you're not a bible believing person then of course i don't think that you would see it but for those that are bible believing people you know you've heard and so govern yourselves accordingly. Just be careful. Be careful. Um, like I said, I wanted to review, um, you know, the episodes. I wanted to review, you know, the reality show. And I wanted to be very, you know, just fair in my review. And so I think I'm being fair. 
Um, I just don't agree, you know, and I'm, I already said that I don't agree with everything. And if something comes up that I feel strongly about that needs to be discussed, and I will. Now, my prayers are for them, that, that God will bless them with the further understanding regarding their walk with him and the things that they need to do. But we just need to understand this, that the Bible talks about there's a sin of ignorance. There are things that we do that we don't know that we're doing wrong. That's why it's important to ask for repentance daily or throughout the day or whatever you're inspired to because you may have done something wrong and may not have been aware of it. Um, have you, how many have driven in areas where you weren't, you did not know what the speedy limit was, right? And you got pulled over by a cop and they told you, well, ma'am, you were going, you know, 40 miles an hour. It's a 25 mile, mile an hour zone. Well, you're like, officer, I had no idea that it was a 25 mile. Well, that's, that's the law, ma'am. And you were to abide by the law and they gave you a ticket. Why? Because you broke the law. Um, whether you knew it or not, you broke the law. And so the same thing with God's word. And I know that people are like, oh, you know, she's a law, da, da, da. But people need to understand that God is a God of order. And so the law is in place for our protection. And it also teaches us, teaches us how to please God. And so without the law, we would not know how to please God. And so it governs us. So no, God is not anti-law. He's for law. He's pro-law. Um, Jesus is pro law. Paul was pro law. And a lot of people read those scriptures and they take them out of context as if to say the law is done away with. If the law is done away with, then I can take your husband. It would be lawful. It would be lawful for me to commit adultery. It would be lawful for me to commit fornication. It would be, it'd be okay. God would be okay with that. But he's not. So why? Because he said fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. Um, so, you know, we have to understand the scriptures and we have to understand that everything is nailed to the cross, that there are some things that are still relevant in today's time and to figure out what exactly that is. So praying for you, you know, you may not agree and that's OK. But my thing is, instead of not agreeing, why don't you just be open and um, do your own research and do share what you've come up with? I'm definitely open for that. If you came up with other scriptures that say something different. Um, I believe it was Pastor Cheney that came up with Revelation, the 1916, and he talked about how Jesus had on his thigh written the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Um, but when I looked that up, um, I looked up a word on, it's in the Greek transliteration, um, the Greek, um, in the Greek, it doesn't mean on, um, like as in, um, on as in like written on like he carved the name on there but it talked about in that verse that he had a vest vester on first and then it it lay the it, vester is like it's a vest but it's a long kind of little roll it's a it's a robe and it, it's with long so it laid on so when you look up the word on in the greek that same passage it means to lay on it means to lay against or over it doesn't mean that he grafted it in his skin and what you need to understand um, about Jesus the Christ and you have to compare Jesus's life and how he was perfect and to that Passover lamb that was perfect the Passover lamb was perfect and so Jesus was perfect. And that Passover lamb, when it was chosen, and the Passover lamb was a type of Christ. And I'm going to say this quick because I do have to get this call. But the Passover lamb was perfect. The Passover lamb did not have any blemishes. It was spotless. No blemishes. Um, it was male of the first year. So since the lamb was the type of Christ, and since Christ died on Passover, there's a lot of similarities between the two. So when we look at Jesus... And his body, his body was very much like the lamb that was used during the time of the Exodus. When they had to kill the lamb, they used the blood of the lamb to post upon the doorpost so that God would pass over them to execute judgment upon the Egyptians. So that same lamb that was without blemish, without spots and all that, he had the lamb had to be perfect. The same Christ was compared to that same lamb. So no. The name that was on there was written upon the extension of the vesture, not upon his skin, not marked upon his skin. The on factor was the fact that it laid on his leg.
not the fact that it was imprinted on this leg when you do the Greek, the Greek transliteration of that word on. And so that's what I'm just saying to Pastor Cheney, that it did not mean to be in, embedded in his skin or to be marked upon his skin or cut in his skin, but it was laid on his skin. It was laid against his skin, um, next to his leg, I'm sorry, on his thigh. When the, the roll, the vester laid upon him, that's what it said. Um, or it may have been an extension of the vester that was that he had on during that time because he wasn't naked. Um, you know, God is, is a God of decency and in order. Um, he would not expose himself because he doesn't even allow the priests to expose themselves. Um, you know, so just my thoughts, something to look into. Thank you so much for listening. Again, if you come up with some other ideas or whatever comments you have, like I said, I don't mind disagreements. You know, not everybody's going to agree with me, but here's my thing. If you're going to disagree, give me some references. Give me some information so we can kind of go back and forth, not to argue, but to share or so that I can look into it because I could be altogether wrong. I mean, it's possible, right? Um, no one's always right. So I can definitely be wrong. But based on my judgment, based on my understanding of the scriptures, that's what I came up with when I looked into it. So I am I am against <laughs> I'm against tattooing. I don't think it's for the believers to do it all. And um, yeah, that's just something more to pray about. So that's it. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Until next time. Shalom. <laughs>